we have a brand new absolutely massive balance patch for Helldivers 2. So let's get stuck into this because there is a lot to cover in this video. Uh, but I will say this at the top of the video. The heavy machine gun has been nerfed. I told you guys this thing was OP. Anyway, let's move on. So this is what we've got. Patch 01.000.200. Liberty, freedom, democracy. Good day, Helldivers. Today, we have a slightly bigger update for you, all to assist in the liberation efforts of our galaxy, as well as some new environmental threats to watch out for. May Liberty guide your path. And the overview is, this update includes balance changes to missions, stratagems, weapons, enemies, and Helldivers, general fixes, and stability improvements. Gameplay changes are up first. We've got new planetary hazards. We've got blizzards, and we've got sandstorms. I cannot wait to see these. Specifically the blizzards, I bet they look absolutely sick on the snow planets. Cannot wait to see them. So let's move on to balancing and let's begin with missions. Retrieve essential personnel mission types. Moved the enemy spawn points further away from the objective to give players a fairer chance of defending the location. Now that's a massive, massive buff to these missions or I guess nerf to these missions. Um, because what generally happens, even on like, I'm going to say on difficulties from like 5 and above, sometimes you can get bogged down on these missions, especially if it's against automatons, because they just gun down the civilians as they're spawning, and it is quite hard to keep control of it. So I, I think this is definitely needed. Um, there are also fewer civilians required to complete the mission on higher difficulties. So yeah, I think all in all that's good, because it is a pretty frustrating mission type. Destroy Command Bunkers now has more objective locations. The mission was too easy before compared to other missions. It can now appear in operations from difficulty 5. Half the negative effect of operation modifiers that increase stratagem cooldowns or call-in times. Now, that last one is what gets my attention. I mean, half the negative effect of operation modifiers that increase stratagem cooldowns or call-in times. That is great because these were the most absolutely frustrating um, stratagem cooldown blocker things. They were just the worst, right? Those negative effects were terrible, so I'm, I'm good they're looking at that. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether this is just general for all the missions or just related to the Command Bunker. I'm going to go with it's just for everything at the moment, um, but maybe it is just related to Command Bunker missions. Um, but hopefully it isn't, um, because it does say Operation Modifiers. Um, also as well, this Destroy Command Bunker's mission type uh, being available now from Difficulty 5 onwards. There's a lot of missions that are not available um, at harder difficulties, like Raise the Flag. I, I recently, or you'll see in this video, I did one raise the flag mission first time ever uh, i'm well, by one i mean one difficulty i've never seen that mission type before because i don't play on that difficulty but it will be cool to have that actually at the higher difficulties i think <laughs> right this is where we're getting spicy because there's a lot of primary secondary and support weapon changes now loads of stuff is going to get changed so let's get into it and i'll give commentary when i think i need to so let's do it arc thrower fixed charging inconsistencies it will now always take one second to charge a shot arc thrower reduced distance from 50 meter to 35 meter actually i think that needed to be done because it looked it was really janky having that kind of range because it just it feels like a close range weapon and the fact you could use it at, at like 50 meters was yeah shocking literally shocking oh dear uh, and finally with the arc thrower increased stagger force so what we've got there is uh, overall nerfs to the arc throw the range and the stagger force increasing is a nerf um, but it always takes one second to charge now it does give you that consistency gives you a bit of balance with the weapon but i do think the arc thrower is overall nerfed the guard dog gets a change as well and it now restores full ammo from supply boxes this will be a nice change to the guard dog especially you know uh, there's two guard dog variants right so the laser guard dog that doesn't ever run out of ammo but the other one with the assault rifle on it does and actually it's surprisingly good at killing like low HP enemies, especially terminated enemies. It can really stop you from getting flooded with enemies. Really strong, but of course now this is a pretty strong buff to it. Um, of course the laser one, like I said, doesn't really need ammo. It won't run out of ammo. Um, but yeah, guard dog buff, I'm all for it. Anti-material rifle gets an absolutely massive buff. This has got a 30% increase on damage. That is massive, that is actually massive. I think this is going to become one of the strongest weapons in the game, straight up. This is a crazy buff. This is actually a crazy buff, this is. You know, you think about shooting hulks in the in the face with this. Shooting tanks, shooting, like, towers, anything. This is crazy. This is actually crazy. I think this is going to do loads and loads of damage. And I just think this is going to be, like, if you can aim, this is going to be one of the best weapons, especially at harder difficulties, because 
taking out the, the hard elite enemies is basically what those modes are all about. Um, the, the small enemies, yeah, you can kind of control them. Yeah, I know you can get flooded by them, but yeah, the elite enemies are generally the danger. Anti-material rifle is almost tailor-made to kill them, provided they've got exposed uh, weak spots. And it's definitely much better against the bots, I would say, than the bugs. But yeah, big buff there. Breaker incendiary damage per bullet increased from 15 per bullet to 20 per bullet. Um, yeah, also its fire damage per tick is increased from 50%. Uh, sorry, fire damage per tick is increased by 50% from all sources. So, okay, I guess that's all fire damage, but I guess the reason why they put that under Breaker Incendiary uh, is because, obviously, that sets targets on fire. Now, there was a bug with this where it wouldn't actually burn targets unless you were the host. So, it would visually set them on fire, but it wouldn't actually do any burn damage. But if you were the host of the game, it would do burn damage and suddenly became a much stronger weapon. So I think this is why, like, myself included, think this weapon's trash. Because I'm, I'm not the host in the games I'm playing when I'm using this weapon. And I'm firing it into stuff. And it's not actually setting them up. Well, it is setting them on fire visually. But it's not actually doing the damage over time. Which it should be doing if you're the host. So maybe that's been fixed. I don't know. But yeah, big news there. I mean, fire damage. The, the per tick increase by 50% from all fire damage sources. This could be a massive buff to the Breaker and Sandry, honestly. And also just to, like the flame or anything that sets stuff on fire. Liberator Penetrator. Okay, this is like one of the worst primary weapons. And it really shouldn't be because it's got, I think it's got medium armor penetration, hasn't it? Um, but now it's got a full auto mode. So it's probably worth checking out. Whether it's going to make it super good, I don't know. Um, but it's probably worth checking out because maybe there's like a stealth buff or something for it. I don't know. But honestly, yeah, I mean, it, that's okay. Full, full auto mode for it. Like, yeah, it's okay. Moving on to the Dominator. So increased damage from 200 to 300. Uh, Dominator increased stagger um, as well. Now again, yeah, this the Dominator. I think this is a, uh, again this is a massive buff. <laughs> like really is a massive buff. Um, it, I think this is going to be one I'm going to need to play with because it is kind of a funky weapon. But yeah, that, that's just a huge buff. That is from 200 to 300. Like what? These buffs are crazy. The Diligence Counter Sniper. Okay, again probably one of the weaker primary weapons in the game. Just basically take the anti-material rifle and then take something with a high fire rate as your primary weapon. To act as your, um, you know, your close range deterrent, I guess. Anyway, this is now increased armor penetration from light to medium. So, this could suddenly become a really strong option. Because if, again, you're hitting those crit spots with this, it's going to do damage. And it is going to really damage the bot. So, again, you've got good aim. It looks like we're, we're maybe entering a, a patch here where sniper builds are going to be very, very strong. So, moving on to the slugger. This is big nerf. So, reduced stagger. They've also reduced the damage from 208 to 250, and they've reduced its demolition force, so for, like, you know, blowing up objects and stuff. Uh, and they fixed the armor penetration tag in the menu, and then this then moves on to Slugger, Liberator Concussive, and the Senator fixed incorrect armor penetration tags in the menu. So the Slugger is a powerful shotgun. It has been nerfed, and it probably did need nerfing. So again, I think I'm all for this. I think it's a pretty good change. But the big news here is they had incorrect armor penetration tags. Now they've been fixed. This is good news. Recoilless rifle. Okay, check this out. Increased the number of rockets you restore from supply boxes from two to three. This might make it a little bit more attractive for those players like myself who prefer to spam down the EAT. Now there are times where the EAT isn't as good as the recoilless rifle. Notably, if there are stratagem blockers, although they have been nerfed in this patch, but if those are in place, oh, well, things that increase the cooldown timer, I should say, stratagem blockers will still be here because they're still, you know, objectives on the map and they will block your stratagem from use in certain areas. Um, but essentially, if you don't have access to stratagems, then the eat is no good, right? But the recoilless, you've always got it with you. So there are, like, you know, some pros and cons to it. But, yeah, I, I think um, this is okay for the recoilless rifle. You going to get more rockets, right? You get one extra rocket, so that's fine from ammo boxes. Spear. Okay, the spear is like one of the worst weapons in the game, but when it works, it's incredibly powerful. So they've increased the number of missiles you restore from supply boxes from one to two. Again, similar to what they've done with recoilless rifle, so I guess you've got more chances to mess up the lock-on and mess up the, the deployment of this weapon. But yeah, it is a really good weapon Reloading. when it works. <laughs> and here's the heavy machine gun nerf. The highest fire rate mode has been reduced from 1200 RPM to a more moderate 950. And I've got to ask, why? Why even do this? Because the 1200 RPM mode 
I mean, you're ludicrously crazy if you're going to use that mode because you just empty the magazine super fast. It's only got a small magazine anyway. The amount of damage it does, it makes you feel like a goddamn badass when it happens. Um, but yeah, I'm sad about this because I, I did actually quite like the, that ridiculous RPM. I'm, it was amazing. But generally, most of the time, I used it in its lower RPM mode anyway. But, you know, if you needed to go and destroy some uh, point-blank range instantly, then you could use the 1200 RPM mode, but apparently no longer. So let's move on to the stratagems. Patriot Exosuit Rockets will now penetrate armor only on a direct hit. So you have to directly hit the targets. I don't think you could... I think this means you can't do glancing hits. And it might even mean you need to hit them in the crit spots. But I don't think that that's true. I think it just means you need to hit the target head on. Um, and you will penetrate them. So yeah, this apparently is a nerf, I would say. Uh, well, it's not apparently. It is a nerf. Because if they were just all penetrating, regardless of the impact, then yeah, that was obviously stronger than them only now penetrating on a direct hit. Okay, let's take a look at the enemy changes. So, balancing adjustments have been made too. Chargers, normal melee attack now does less damage against exosuits. Okay, so a little bit of an exosuit buff there. Because charges always seem to sneak upon you. I don't know how they do this because they're massive, but they do. Bile spewer and nursing spewer do less damage with their puke. This is great because I hate dying to bile spewers. The nursing spewer, well, they're both the same. They're both the big ones, right? Is it, I was going to say the nursing spewer is the little one, but it's not, is it? They're both the big ones. The one's got armor, right? And the other one doesn't. Anyway, it's the ones that kill you instantly with the spew. It's horrible. They are now, they're going to do less damage, which is great. The Bile Titan can no longer be stunned, though, which does make sense because the little concussion grenade, stunning, or rather the stun grenade, concussion, concussing the massively, like, 60-foot-tall Bile Titan made no sense. But, yeah, they cannot be stunned. This also means, as well, orbital strikes. Um, I think there's the EMS strike, which will stun them. That's not going to stun them. Uh, and the uh, uh, the turret, as well, won't stun them, the, the EMS mortar. Shriekers no longer create bug breaches. That's a... Big nerf, actually, to Shriekers, because Shriekers are hard to kill. I mean, you always end up with loads of them on top of you. This probably explains why. If you're not destroying the nest fast and not killing them fast, you end up flooded with bugs. <laughs> Shriekers hitting you while they are dead now does significantly less damage. Okay, I'm not a fan of that. I think it's funny. It's just absolutely funny when they die and fall out of the sky and kill you. Um, so, Arrowhead, come on, you've got to revert that. You've got to revert it. <laughs> There's some Helldiver changes as well. So balancing adjustments have been made too. Heavy and medium armor protects better and you now take about 10% less damage than before while wearing heavy and about 5% less when wearing medium armor. Fortified commando and light armor is unchanged. Now, this is a massive buff. I have been rolling. I mean, I was, I was going through my phase of using the shield pack, uh, the backpack. And, and light armor but i'm not doing that anymore because I'm, I'm basically rolling auto cannon all the time because i'm a madman but i'll roll the auto cannon but then i need to obviously use my backpack for the ammo so i need to use heavy armor and i've been rolling with heavy armor and it's surprisingly good even before this buff how it would keep you alive against things like rocket devastators and just automatons in general from their ranged fire but now they're buffed even more so about 10 percent less damage than before that's really strong so i think this could put the medium armor almost into a place where the heavy armor was before this patch and heavy armor is just going to get really strong so yeah this is honestly this is a massive giga buff to armor okay we've got a bunch of fixes so let's blast through these fix an issue where save settings for ps5 would be reset when the game is rebooted causing things such as loadout and hidden settings to reset enemies now properly target exosuits previously many enemies effectively ignored exosuits if a hell diver on foot was available for them to target okay that, that actually makes sense right so your exosuits are going to get destroyed now if you call them in the enemies won't prioritize you they'll just take the exosuit out as well fixed exosuits being able to fire their weapons while opening the minimap okay that's good because that's super annoying or it was the hell diver and exosuit both had a bug that made them sometimes take explosion damage multiple times making things like auto or, uh, automaton rockets be too deadly this is now fixed okay so the Helldiver also, okay, maybe this is why we were dying to um, Rocket Devastators all the time. Automaton enemy constellations that preferred to spawn more of a more of a certain uh, Devastator types did not work and are now functioning as they should. This means that sometimes when playing against the Automatons, you will face more Devastators instead of other enemy types. Okay, bit of a buff there to the Automatons potentially. 
We've improved the system that prevents helipod steering close to large or important objects. We have solved issues where the effective area around objects was a lot larger than intended. We have reduced the number of objects that prevented helipod steering. Note, this system is intended to prevent soft locks where players can drop on important interaction points or drop into untended places. We will continue to monitor the state of the system after the update to see if any additional tweaks are necessary. And then they've also fixed cases where the ground under some assets could be bombed, causing them to float. Okay, so we've actually got a ballistic shield change here. So collision mesh has been slightly increased in size for more forgiveness, but they've changed shield poses so that less of the Helldiver is exposed and they've addressed a bug where parts of the Helldiver would become vulnerable when using the shield in first person. So this might be a bit of a sleeper support, to be honest, support weapon to bring down because um, I've never used it. I mean, I've used it. Well, no, I have. I've used it once and I just was like, this is terrible, you know, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's really good. And if it makes you functionally immune to all of the small arms fire from especially the automatons, it might be goated. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, moving on to some known issues. So these are in the game and they've not been fixed yet, but they are aware of them. So there are issues that, uh, these are issues, sorry, that were either introduced by the patch or being worked on or are from a previous version that might not yet have been fixed. Game might crash when picking up a snowball or throwing a, or throwing back a grenade. Again, that's not great. You know, I, you want to throw grenades back all the time when they get thrown at you as well. And uh, picking up snowballs, people are just going to do it. Like this is the, the old argument, isn't it? Where... Players are just going to do this, you know, unless they can disable this kind of stuff from the game um, to prevent people from crashing the game, un unknowingly crashing the game, I should say. Then, yeah, just relying on, like, word of mouth or Discord or Reddit or YouTube videos or TikTok or whatever. It, yeah, it's not it's not really going to be uh, possible, is it? So I would expect your game to keep crashing randomly and maybe it'll be because of these two reasons. Now, these are various issues involving friend invites and cross-play. So cross-platform friend invites might not show up in the friend request tab. Players cannot unfriend other players befriended via friend code. Players cannot unblock players that were not in their friends list beforehand. Players cannot befriend, be, befriend <laughs> players with Steam names shorter than three characters. Explosive weapon stats include only direct hit damage but not explosive damage. Explosions do not break your limbs except for when you fly into a rock. <laughs> Planet Liberation reaches 100% at the end of every defend mission. Yeah. Well, that does still make you feel amazing when it happens. Because you're like, yes, I've done it. But then, no, it's just a bug. Happens to everyone. Drowning in deep water with Vitality Booster equipped puts Helldiver into a broken state. Yep, that's super annoying. Um, Stratagem Beam might attach itself to an enemy, but it will deploy to its original location. Some player customizations, like title or body type, may reset after restarting the game. And that is the end of the transmission. Okay, check this out. Now, I'm on Ubernea here on a difficulty one mission. Look at these things in the sky. Now, these were identified over on Reddit. Uh, apparently, there's invisible or cloaked ships in space around planets where we are operating against the automatons. And I was like, no, that, that can't be right. But then I found one. And I'm like, what is going on here? Is that some sort of stealth ship? There are a lot of, <laughs> there are a lot of um, explanations for this. And I guess I'll explain some in a second. But yeah, let's just roll with the fact it might be Illumina because Illumina do have stealth technology. We know this from Helldivers 1 lore and we also know that Helldivers 1 happened over 100 years ago in the overall lore of the, I guess, the Helldivers universe. You can see another one there as well. So if I zoom in a bit with my sickle, you'll get a, a bit of a better view. And also there's an eagle flying through there. Absolutely amazing. But yeah, look. Now look at the look at the size of this. It looks massive. Right? It looks a lot bigger than uh, one of our destroyers because it looks further away. Um, but <laughs> can I sort of be the guy that goes, actually, this is probably nothing. I think I need to be because what you'll see in a second is, well, it's gunfire. <laughs> Hilariously, when you zoom in with sights, uh, it disappears. But obviously, just looking from the ground, you can see there is laser weapons fire there in the sky. Now, I think what these are are just sort of entities or objects in the skybox that spawn the lasers. I think that's all they are. They could be Illuminate ships, but they, they're very clearly involved in a firefight. And they, they're not using blue lasers. <laughs> so if they were using blue lasers, you would probably go, okay, they're Illuminate. Um, so yeah, I think I think technically it's just an object in the sky that spawns the, the sort of laser show for us to see from the ground. The fact we can see them is, I think, just because, I, I don't know, maybe we can see them because of my 
graphic settings, maybe we can see them because what's going on in this skybox? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't think they're Illuminate. But I still think it's cool to just run with, yeah, they could be Illuminate. And if the devs are watching, <laughs> what the devs should do is go, actually, let's roll with this. Let's turn them into Illuminate. And that would be sick. Actually using things in the game that the community latch onto and developing them and turning them into something crazy. That's what I want to see. That could be mental. Also as well, talking of mental, um, I, I guess I just do kind of want to talk about the mission that I'm on here because, uh, yeah. And before I do that, actually, um, the way to find these ships is to just look from the ground for the lasers. And when you see the laser battles happening in space, just basically zoom in and you'll see the ships. Uh, anyway, yeah, this mission type. So this is um, Raise the Flag of Super Earth. And I'm like, I've never actually done this before because I think this only happens on the lowest difficulty. And you basically got to call down a Super Earth flag. I oh, don't worry, I'm not going to show you the whole mission because, I mean, just standing here watching a flag raise is, is kind of, well, it, it's kind of boring. But I want to show you this before I end the video because it is actually sick. Watch what comes down with this flag. I mean, the flag plays music for a start. Patriotic music, it's absolutely beautiful. But there's something special that joins it. And, and this has to be, it, we need this as a support stratagem, as a backpack. The music's awesome. Look at that. <laughs> it's a guard dog with a camera. It's broadcasting our amazing liberation skill <laughs> of the flag raising. Now, this should be a stratagem that we that follows us around and somehow buffs us in some sort of way. Like, I don't know. Gives us like a speed or a health buff or something. I don't know, because we're spreading democracy. We're literally live streaming spreading democracy. It is meta beyond meta beyond meta. All right, guys. Thank you for listening and watching the video. If you enjoyed this, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Uh, as you obviously you can tell, I'm really enjoying Helldivers. I hope you guys still are enjoying Helldivers. And uh, yeah, a ton of balance changes to go through. And uh, I think I'm going to try and get some games in now with the anti-material rifle. Because that seems to be just giga buffed in this patch. All right, guys. I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. See you soon.